in lecture 32, we looked at the uh, Stefan flow model, which is essentially a diffusion model uh, in, uh, to be applied to stagnant surroundings. And therefore, uh, momentum equation was not invoked, only the species transfer and the energy equations were invoked. And we applied these equations to the three types of mass transfer that we, or four types of mass transfer that we normally encounter. Uh, the one is the inert mass transfer without heat transfer, inert mass transfer with heat transfer, uh, then the mass transfer with heat transfer and simple chemical reaction. And then finally, we applied it to the case of uh, mass transfer with uh, arbitrary chemical reaction. All these uh, four types uh, are most uh, describe the overall problem of mass transfer. Today, we are going to consider the Kuwait flow model and therefore, uh, we shall be invoking both the, both the momentum equation uh, and continuity equation along with the, the species transfer and the energy equation. So, we shall apply the Kuwait flow model to mass transfer with wall suction and blowing. This is essentially a case of, let us say, air flowing over surface and air itself is being sucked or blown through the wall, which would be the simple uh, case of suction and blowing uh, that, that we considered even with similarity solutions. Then we will move to the general problem of convective mass transfer. And in this, we shall interpret the uh, effective uh, uh, mass transfer coefficient, which we shall term as g star. And, uh, and by way of an example, we will calculate, uh, estimate the evaporation slash burning time of a liquid droplet. So, let us begin then uh, with the momentum transfer with wall suction and blowing. Now, in the Kuwait flow model, as you will recall, the velocity u is taken to be constant multiplied by y and all actual derivatives are set to 0 uh, and therefore, a is constant and then hence under steady state, transport equation would read like this d by dy of n psi y equal to d by dy of rho m v psi minus gamma plus gamma t. Uh, where gamma t is the turbulent exchange coefficient, uh, d psi by dy equal to s psi. Uh, just by way of reminder, the, the Kuwait flow model is really, uh, let us say this is the surface and we assume that the velocity profile will be like so with u infinity here. All d by dx are 0 for all variables and u infinity remains constant uh, along the plate and this is the direction y. So, this is really the Kuwait flow model. The mass transfer would be taking place in this direction. So, if you look at the meanings of psi, psi equal to 1 would imply simply uh, continuity equation or mass conservation equation. Uh, psi equal to u will imply momentum equation which gamma equal to mu uh, and then uh, if, if it is a mass transfer, mass fraction omega k, this would be the species transfer equation and this would be the, the uh, energy equation. We have ignored the radiation and other uh, mass heat generation terms here. M double dot y k is really the fixed law uh, diffusion flux given by the fixed law. Uh, and uh, uh, rho m v a will be m dot w is equal to uh, uh, constant, which is uh, the mass flux would remain constant. So, let us consider momentum transfer. So, if psi is equal to u, then the governing equation, uh, remember that there is no source term here, but the pressure gradient is also 0 and therefore, the equation will be d by d y n w u minus mu plus mu t d u by d y equal to 0. If I integrate this once and note that the boundary condition is u equal to 0 at y is equal to 0, the so shear stress is given by mu times du by dy y equal to 0. Of course, mu t would be 0 at the wall. Uh, the constant of integration c will be simply minus tau wall 
and hence the uh, integrating from 0 to infinity would give me d u divided by n w u tau or w uh, equal to 0 to delta d y mu plus mu t, which I am for the moment calling it as constant c 1 some integral value uh, integrated value c 1. Uh, and the integration of this term would simply result in uh, 1 over n w uh, ln 1 plus n w u infinity by tau w. But what is n w u infinity by tau w? We can interpret that. Remember n w is rho times v w because the same air, same fluid is being blown into the into the boundary layer uh, as is flowing over a plate. Uh, rho v w u infinity divided by tau wall. If I multiply and divide this by u infinity, then I would get v w divided by u infinity equal to rho u infinity square by tau w, which is nothing but v w by u infinity c f x by 2. And as you will recall, this is nothing but the blowing parameter, which we had invoked uh, during similarity solutions and integral solutions. So, uh, essentially then uh, uh, n w would be a 1 over n w ln 1 plus b f would equal some constant c 1. So, that is what I have written here ln 1 plus b f would equal c 1 times n w and c 1 rho u infinity b f over c f x by 2, because n w is rho v w, which can be written as rho u infinity b f c f x by 2. Now, of course, as b f tends to 0, the c f x must tend to c f x at v w equal to 0. And then assuming that this integration that is integration 0 to delta mu plus mu t uh, would remain the same, whether there is mass transfer at the wall or no mass transfer at the wall, which of course would be exactly true if it was a laminar boundary layer. But uh, even in turbulent boundary layer, if we say that mu t essentially uh, is a function of y and not affected by whether uh, as you will recall from Prandtl's mixing length that it will not be too seriously affected. If we assume C 1 is independent of whether V w is finite or 0, we can show that uh, it follows from this equation that C f x V w divided by C f x V w 0 would be ln 1 plus B f by B f. This equation is applicable to both laminar and turbulent flows and it is derived for d p d x equal to 0, but can be taken to be valid even for mild pressure gradients as was done during integral analysis of, uh, of uh, momentum equations in, in our previous analysis of fluid flow problems. Now, for all four types of mass transfer, I am not going to re-derive as I did in, in case of Stephen flow. I will simply say that, uh, that in each case, we simply converted the applicable mass transfer and energy transfer equation to a conserved property equation with appropriately defined conserved property psi. So, for all types of mass transfer uh, and an appropriately defined conserved property psi, n w will be equal to n psi y equal to constant and hence uh, for conserved property uh, uh, I, instead of psi, I can also take psi minus psi w as a conserved property. Then n w uh, into psi minus psi w gamma plus gamma t d by d y psi minus psi w is equal to 0 or n w into psi minus psi w minus omega uh, uh, minus gamma plus gamma t d psi by d y equal to c 1 some constant c 1 now. Uh, remember d psi omega uh, d psi w by d y is of course, always 0. So, that is that does not appear here. Uh, but uh, d psi by d y would, would, would certainly survive. Then uh, if I write this equation in the w state, then I would get c 1 equal to uh, gamma d psi by d y at y equal to uh, y equal to 0. And if I write it in the t state, I will get n w psi minus uh, psi t minus psi w. And in the t state, uh, there are no uh, variations of psi and therefore, this entire term would be 0 and again c 1. And therefore, equating the two equations because they are both equal to c 1, I would get c 1 equal to n w psi t minus psi w equal to minus gamma 
d psi by dy at w. This is uh, uh, and at the w state of course omega t uh, gamma t is equal to 0. So, that is what I, I, I have stated here. We shall make use of this equation uh, and substitute uh, for c 1 here c 1 equal to n w psi t minus psi w. I will substitute that here uh, on the next slide and you will see that therefore, I would get uh, n w psi minus psi t uh, minus gamma plus gamma t d psi by dy equal to 0. If I integrate this equation from w state y equal to 0 to infinity state y equal to delta, then I will get 1 over n w equal to 0 to infinity d psi by d y d psi by psi minus psi t equal to 0 to delta d y gamma plus gamma t, where gamma uh, in case of energy gamma is k by C p. In case of uh, uh, species transfer, it is rho m times diffusivity. So, let us say that integral like in the previous case, we will say is equal to C 2 let us say. Then uh, the integration of the left hand side would give me n w equal to 1 over C 2 uh, 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 ln 1 plus b psi because same as previous case b psi is equal to c psi infinity minus psi w uh, uh, divided by psi w minus psi t and n w will be from the previous slide n w would be uh, c 1 divided by psi t minus psi w uh, and that would equal minus gamma uh, d psi by dy at w psi t minus psi w. So, we have uh, got one equation which is of this form and the other equation which is of this form, the first containing C 2 and the second containing C 1. So, now consistent with the theory of, uh, of heat transfer, we may write minus gamma d psi by d y at w is equal to g times psi w minus psi infinity, where g is now the mass transfer coefficient. Uh, so, if I replace uh, this quantity by this quantity in the in the previous expression here, then uh, I get uh, C 1 would be, uh, uh, I can get C 1 from there uh, in terms of G and therefore, uh, the, the final form would look like n w equal to G times psi infinity minus psi w uh, divided by psi w minus psi t or simply G times B psi and uh, G itself would be 1 over C 2 times l n 1 plus B psi divided by B psi. Now, if I let, uh, if I assume that as B psi tends to 0, G tends to G star, the mass transfer coefficient, let us say it tends to G star corresponding to B psi tending to 0. The further, and if I say that uh, C 2 remains constant with or without mass transfer, as we said earlier, uh, the, this, this statement is of course, perfectly true for uh, for uh, uh, laminar boundary layer, but even if I say it is true for turbulent boundary layer where 1 over uh, uh, where gamma t would be a function of y, then, uh, then it follows that g over g star would be simply ln 1 plus b psi by b psi. This is a very important result. Thus, the fictitious g star flux is now given by n w g star ln 1 plus b psi. Uh, where 1 over g star is equal to C 2, which is equal to 0 to delta d y over gamma plus gamma t. So, we can now view g star itself as the sum of layer by layer from 0 to delta resistances to mass transfer in the considered phase over the width delta, because remember this is the, uh, 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 this is diffusion uh, coefficient. So, 1 over diffusion coefficient would simply be resistance, resistance and we are simply saying that 1 over g star uh, uh, which itself is a kind of a resistance because g star is conductance. Then uh, 1 over g star would be simply layer by layer addition of resistances to mass transfer in the considered phase. This interpretation of g star enables its evaluation from gamma y equal to gamma psi uh, in a laminar boundary layer and from the known gamma t y from a turbulence model like a mixing length or for example, in a turbulent boundary layer. 
Thus, the Coet flow model permits study of the property variations. Remember, uh, gamma itself could be a function of psi, of temperature or, uh, or the mass fraction itself. Gamma t on the other hand would be a function of the turbulent uh, characteristics of the boundary layer. Uh, in fact, if gamma is equal to constant and gamma t is equal to 0, which is the case of a, of a laminar uh, diffusion uh, problem, then uh, g star would be simply gamma by delta, which is same as the Stefan flow model in which g star was shown to be equal to gamma by L. We have recovered most of the features of, of the Stefan flow model. Uh, for gamma equal to constant and gamma, uh, uh, gamma t equal to 0 and g star would then be gamma by L, L n 1 plus b psi, which is what we had shown in the Stefan flow model. Now, if we consider the case of pure heat transfer in the presence of suction and blowing, something we have solved by similarity method, then uh, with psi is equal to h m equal to C p t, because it is an inert uh, situation just a, a, a considered phase as air flowing over it and the suction and blown fluid is, is the same uh, as, the, as the fluid in the considered phase. It, its temperature may be same or different that does not matter, but uh, uh, therefore, we would get uh, minus k dt dy equal to 0, which is the heat flux and that would equal g times C p into T w minus T infinity according to our model uh, and that would equal uh, heat transfer coefficient for suction and blowing into T w minus T infinity. So, that is what the heat transfer coefficient is and therefore, we, we deduce that the heat transfer coefficient for finite V w is nothing but G by C p and likewise H cof V w equal to 0 that is in the absence of uh, mass transfer would be equal to g star by C p, because g star is a value of g when V w is equal to 0. And therefore, we, we deduce that g over g star would also be equal to h cof V w divided by h cof V w 0 equal to Stanton x at V w uh, for V w divided by Stanton x for V w equal to 0 and that would equal l n b h by b h, where b h now is t infinity minus t w over T w minus T t, because specific heats are in all states are taken to be constant at the moment. Uh, so, now this relation was found to be applicable in real boundary layer flow in lecture 30 you will recall and therefore, the Kuwait flow model captures also the features of a real boundary layer flow. So, the Kuwait flow model on the one hand when uh, when gamma t is 0 captures the Stefan flow model features and it also captures the boundary layer flow features. At least uh, the, when the species are the same, it captures both the, both the features very well. Now, we turn to the uh, application of this to evaporation and burning in which uh, uh, we shall in invoke the, the previous expression for uh, can be used instantaneously to estimate the evaporation or burning time. Thus, uh, let us say if I have rho L dV by dt is equal to minus m dot w, which is the rate of change of mass is equal to minus m dot w kg per second and that would equal A w n w and that would equal minus A w uh, uh, g star L n 1 plus b psi, where A w is the area of the surface through which the mass transfer is taking place. Then integrating this from time t equal to 0 to complete evaporation when the volume disappears gives us the relationship T evaporation or burn is equal to minus rho L L n 1 plus B psi uh, equal to uh, V initial to 0 d V by A w g star. Now, let us say uh, if we are considering a liquid droplet and diffusion mass transfer that is gamma T is equal to 0, then uh, A w will be equal to 4 pi R w square, uh, V will be 4 pi 3 pi r w square uh, and g star will be gamma h by r w as you will recall. Then hence uh, you will see that evaporation or burning time would be minus rho l divided by 1 over b psi uh, r w i to 0 r w by gamma uh, m h uh, d r w and that will yield the, the so called d squared law rho l d w i squared at times gamma h 
l n 1 plus b psi. And this expression is used extensively in designing uh, uh, dryers and so on and so forth, because all it says is that if you reduce the smaller the diameter of the uh, uh, of the droplet, uh, faster will be the drying uh, achieved, uh, because uh, uh, if you reduce the diameter by a factor of 2, the evaporation time will reduce by a factor of 4. In stagnant surroundings, this would be considered as a guidance for atomization of fuels, atomization of let us say milk which is to be dried to into a powder and or, or in a cooling tower where, where you, where you uh, send hot cooling water for cooling purposes uh, then in a shower, then you want to reduce the diameter as small as possible. So, that uh, you get very quick drying and a smaller uh, dryer or a cooling tower. Now, let us say the liquid droplet was in a convective environment as in inside a diesel engine, where as you know that in a diesel engine, the, the liquid droplets are injected in, the, uh, in an atomized state uh, and they come out like a cloud uh, and uh, uh, when the piston is at the t, uh, top dead center. Uh, the temperature is already very high in the surroundings uh, and uh, the droplets evaporate and then burn uh, inside the cylinder. So, uh, we can assess such, uh, we can evaluate uh, the evaporation or drying times for uh, evaporation or burning times in such situations. But the environment there is convective because, uh, because the piston's head is, uh, is modeled in such a way that there is a swirl inside the cylinder. Uh, so, the air movement and, and, the, and the particle uh, and the droplet movement, there is a relative velocity between them. So, essentially you get now convective evaporation or convective drying. Same thing happens when you have a, when you have a cooling tower where the droplet is falling down uh, through let us say stagnant air, but that sets up a resultant velocity between the droplet and the, uh, and the surrounding air which is stagnant. On the other hand, in, in thermal power stations, we have uh, you, you will recall that we have uh, uh, cooling towers like that uh, and the uh, air in graces like this uh, and on here you have showers of water uh, where the cooling water uh, from the condenser uh, falls down and there is an air. So, you have a counter current of air and water and therefore, uh, the, uh, the liquid droplets evaporate under counter flow. Uh, so, the relative velocity is additive of the air flow and the water flow uh, droplet flow which is coming downstairs. In the process, the, the water gets cooled and is sent back to condenser. Of course, some amount of water is lost because the air moving upwards picks up some moisture which has to be topped up of course, from time to time. So, that the condenser is not starved of cooled water. So, in such situation we can use a shortcut method uh, and thus we can say that m dot w uh, uh, that is mass transfer rate under convection divided by mass transfer rate under diffusion uh, would be uh, mass transfer rate under convection according to uh, according to the to the uh, Kuwait flow model is g star times a w which is 4 pi r w squared l n 1 plus b uh, and uh, mass transfer rate according to diffusion a model which is the Stefan flow model is rho m d 4 times uh, pi r w uh, into l n 1 plus b and therefore, cancelling the terms, you will get 1 over 2 g star d w, which is the diameter of the droplet uh, divided by rho m diffusivity. And this quantity, this quantity uh, like Nusset number is called the Sherwood number. Yes, in, in mass transfer, the analog, uh, analogous to Nusset number, we have a Sherwood number, which is essentially g star, the mass transfer coefficient into the diameter divided by rho m d, which is equivalent of the conductivity of the fluid. Now, if I use analogy between heat and mass transfer for Lewis number 1, then you know that the for a flow over a sphere, uh, uh, you know that the Nusset number is 2 plus 0.6 Reynolds raised to 0.5 
parental risk to per one third, but I can now say Sherwood number would be 2 times 0 0.6 R, RE raised to 0.5, Schmidt number raised to one third, uh, uh, where RE is the is based on the relative velocity between the gas and the droplet, uh, uh, the diameter of the droplet and the kinematic viscosity or this expression for example, would now get changed to uh, 2 times rho L ln 1 plus B psi uh, R w i to 0 uh, R w d R w divided by gamma h 2 plus 0 0.6 R e d w 0.5 Schmidt number raised to 1 by 3. Now, since this also contains the radius r w by because d w is 2 times r w, uh, this uh, expression integration requires uh, numerical integration uh, because close found solutions uh, are not found. So, let us take uh, for example, if I took a problem, let us say a water droplet d w i is 1 millimeter diameter at 25 degree centigrade evaporates in air uh, whose relative humidity is let us say 25 percent then uh, and temperature is 25 degree centigrade. So, that this is a case of uh, uh, mass transfer without heat transfer and no chemical reaction and let us assume that the relative velocity between the two is 5 meters per second. So, uh, estimate the evaporation time. Uh, and take Schmidt number equal to 0 0.6, which is quite typical of gaseous mixtures. So, this is a mass inert mass transfer problem without heat transfer. The mass fractions are in the infinity state corresponding to 25 percent R h uh, and T equal to 25 will give you omega V infinity equal to 0 0.0078. Omega V w uh, corresponding to 100 uh, percent uh, relative humidity at the wall, uh, at the droplet surface and 25 degree centigrade will be 0 0.02. Bm would be omega vapor in the infinity state minus omega vapor in the W state and omega vapor in the W state minus uh, in the T state which is the transfer surface and that would be equal to 1. So, using this definition for omega V as we did in the uh, in, in problems on uh, diffusion mass transfer, the B m would turn out to be 0 0.0124. At the mean conditions between the infinity and W states, uh, mixture uh, uh, density can be evaluated as 1.177 kilograms per meter cube. Uh, liquid uh, density would be 1000 kg per meter cube, where it is a water. Uh, diffusivity from the lectures, we say that the diffusivity uh, of uh, or water vapor through air is 2.376 into 10 to minus 5 uh, and uh, and nu m will be d diffusivity into Schmidt number which will be equal to 1.42 into 10 to minus 6. So, knowing nu m we can evaluate and u relative we can evaluate the Reynolds number uh, that is uh, required here in the Reynolds number expression and uh, and and, and uh, uh, d m which is required here to calculate gamma h uh, because this is rho m times uh, d m. Uh, so, we can carry out the numerical integration with time step 0 0.01 second then uh, evaporation time at r w equal to 0 would be 2.05 second and the radius would vary in this fashion sorry 0.5 mm to start with and then uh, it uh, drops down very gradually uh, to 0 value here at about 2.05 seconds. Now, uh, we can solve the same problem in, in, in stagnant surroundings by simply setting u w uh, uh, u relative equal to 0, which means that the Reynolds number here is 0 and therefore, this will be 2 times gamma h. Uh, then you will see that the, that the that the evaporation time becomes 4.66 seconds. So, clearly having a relative velocity between the between the gas and the droplet has reduced the the evaporation time and this is this is the principle that is used in cooling towers and, and in diesel engines uh, for the purposes of uh, reducing the size of the uh, 
uh, in case of cooling towers uh, and in, uh, in, in diesel engines this is of great value because it enhances the rate of burning of the fuel and which in incidentally uh, also reduces the cutoff ratio of a diesel engine uh, which in turn improves the efficiency of the engine. So, finally, in summary then we can say that the Kuwait flow model with area equal to constant and u equal to constant times y and d psi by dx equal to 0 uh, gives us the formula n w equal to g star ln 1 plus b psi where g over g star is equal to ln 1 plus b psi by b psi. We interpreted the g star flux as the sum of the layer by layer resistances to mass transfer in the considered phase over boundary layer uh, width. In pure momentum and heat transfer in the presence of suction and blowing that is without my uh, gradients of uh, without gradients of uh, species of any kind uh, because the same species being suck, sucked or blown we have shown that C f x uh, in the presence of suction and blowing divided by C f x in the absence of it is simply one ln 1 plus B f by B f and the heat transfer likewise would be ln 1 plus bh by bh. So, Kuwait flow model recovers essentially the, the results expected from a boundary layer flow model. It also recovers the, the results expected from the Stefan flow model uh, and in turn gives us an opportunity to evaluate the effect, uh, the effect of property variations which we shall take up in, in subsequent lectures. Uh, uh, so, in the next lectures, in the, uh, we will develop uh, very similar results to what we have shown in, in, uh, in Kuwait flow model uh, via the algebraic Reynolds flow model. And you will see what form N, W and B relation has uh, uh, as per the Reynolds, algebraic Reynolds flow model.